Hello everyone and welcome to the 2021 Minnesota Amateur Championships. Terry Miller, the disc golf guy, bringing you some action from CP Adams Disc Golf Course. We've got our lead card, Andy Wacha, along with Joseph Calabrese, Trenton McLeod, and rounding out the card is Cyrus Watran. And we're here for the second round. This is the front half and none other than the legendary Tyler Brickley is joining me for the commentary. Tyler, they've got three rounds to play. We're here for the second round and Andy's out in front, but things are tight. Uh, let's get into it. I am excited to be here. Thanks for having me, Terry. Excited to watch some golf. It's been a while. CP Adams was, of course, I played probably last in 2001 for the Whoa. Pro World Championships. So I don't know if that dates myself, but now how'd you do? <laughs> uh, Joseph's doing really as, well this weekend. Say, as good as these guys? <laughs> no, I am nowhere near as good as uh, this caliber of play that's taking place right now. That was Joseph Calabrese. He's just 14 years old. He sits oh, wow. in second, tied at eight under, and here's Trent McLeod. Is this whole kind of bend off to the right with that clump of trees right there in the fairway? Actually, it's going to go up, and it's somewhat dog legs to the left. Okay. And uh, I th seeing that shot by Trent, and I think puts him in just really good position uh, to go after the pin on the second shot. Here's Cyrus. DD sponsored player. Yeah, and... In doing a few of the edits, I, I guess I'm going to preface it a little. Cyrus, a a very meticulous and methodical warm up that he represents most throws. And uh, looks like it's working. Yeah, it kicks off to the left side just a little bit there, and you see the pin is actually up and to the left. So this is a little hyzer approach for him. For the last few years, the event has largely been played exclusively at Kaposia, and this year Tom and the crew have expanded that, and that's why we're seeing a, a few of the other courses in play. Mm. And here we are for the second of third of the third round, of three total rounds, I should say. That's a nice approach shot by Cyrus. Trenton gets caught up there. Yeah, just a real low-hanging window for him to try and punch through. Ooh, that looks like jail. And Andy's able to give it a run, grabs the pole, but he's going to, at best, walk away with the par here. Yeah, that's a great out from there. It looked like he, hard to tell from this angle, but didn't look like he had much. After catching a little cabbage, Trenton is Ooh. just off the top, yeah. That would have been his par save, so this is going to be for his bogey, yeah? It is, and, you know, immediately I have to think, you know, it's my buddy Dustin that uh, graciously went over there to capture the footage, but for some of these guys, this might be your first time ever on camera. And yeah. A little lead card jitters and nerves coming into it, maybe? Yeah. For sure. That's how it works with most people. I actually seek out cameras. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, good. Good. I think a lot of people get nervous with them. I get nervous when there's not one. Yeah. You think you're doing something wrong if right. there's not like, a camera on you. Yeah. Why isn't there a camera? I'm not just going to go play. <laughs> and our title sponsor is Prodigy Disc for the event. So Joseph's Park job immediately knots him up here with Andy, and they head over to hole two at 290 feet. This is a pretty stock hyzer shot. Ooh. Oh, and it skips out. Oh, that was a great pinpoint placement there, but he got to skip to the edge of the circle. Now, do, are any of these other guys um, sponsored that you know of other than, was it Cyrus that we were looking at that was DD? Yeah, and I apologize. I, I have not heard of any other sponsorship from these gentlemen, and maybe by the end of this weekend, maybe, huh? Maybe? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> let's uh, like and share this video get these guys some some exposure for sure and and i'm gonna go back just a couple years and say it was at this very event when i met jordan castro for the first ever time oh, oh that's awesome so way back in 2014 i think i've covered this event my channel's covered it probably six out of the last seven years wow so great to see the up-and-comers and cyrus 
Great angle on that. He's, oh, yeah, played it out to the right edge of the circle so it skips in. Very well done. That looks a little inside. Yeah, just a little bit short, as you're saying there, for Trenton. I believe, yes, all four gentlemen are Minnesota guys. This largely draws from a, a Minnesota crowd, although, you know, we'll see a few come from Iowa or Wisconsin uh, every once in a while. Trenton just off the weak side there. Now, these are the Mach 3s, which, of course, are going to teach you how to be accurate and control your power, especially from outside the circle. That was just a little hot on the left side. Andy's attempt is low. And, you know, Tyler, I know you haven't necessarily spent a lot of time in the Midwest where I grew up being Minnesota and Wisconsin actually is where I'm from, but Mach 3s have, have been the standard as that one mm -hmm. uh, catches and pulls it in. Mach 3s were absolutely the disc golf standard in really Wisconsin and largely Minnesota for my entire, you know, 10 or first first 10 or 15 years of playing golf. Yeah, it's it's such a classic basket. I mean, I, I know obviously they've been discontinued for a little bit now, but iconic, you know, with the silhouette and the number plate and everything. We've seen those for decades. A lot of good putters out of Minnesota, too. Coincidence? Uh, yeah, I, no. <laughs> No, <laughs> that was a great putt by Cyrus. Yeah, he picks up the birdie after going just a bit deep. Andy for cleaning up his par. We saw Joseph uh, with the long birdie putt as well. I'm uh, give me a couple holes, but I'm I'm trying to. I think I'm getting everybody's names <laughs> down. Well, jo Joseph is now out in the lead. He opens with back to back birdies. Big shout out to Everyday Disc Golf, Tom Marcus and crew. And Joseph doesn't love it as it doesn't quite stand up the way he was hoping for it. We're here on the first par four of the round at 605 feet. So it's so open, just looking to lay down a roller, get maybe a little bit extra distance. Cyrus going with the all air, but oh, we got it around the trees. Yeah, I think that was a little misfire of some sort. You, you heard him say, oh boy, right out of his hands. Mm -hmm. So maybe he had something else in planned or envisioned. Let's see what kind of a sidearm Andy's got. Oh, plenty of power. That was fantastic. Yeah, the, the pin is just essentially straight out. It's 605 feet, and obviously you're just trying to bite off as much as you can on the, the tee shot simply because the second shot is a little bit more difficult. Trenton getting caught up early, going to try and make up the distance on the second shot. Yeah, and the, the basket kind of just extends past there. It's interesting that you can't quite see it, even though it's just off in a distance from that spot. Slight downhill at the very end of the the uh, hole here. I got to say, just after a few holes, this course looks super fun. Yeah, I, and I'll be the first to admit that I don't know if it's been design changes or if my memory is finally starting to to get a little <laughs> hazy. I, I'll, I'll just go. admit I don't remember some of these holes, and maybe somebody from Minnesota can chime in and, and tell me if this has been redesigned in the last uh, 15 or 20 years because there's a few of these holes I absolutely don't remember at all, which is kind of surprising uh, just because I usually do recognize most courses I've played. Yeah, and who know, I mean, courses can look so different, too, from the spring to the winter. This looks like it was filmed maybe in the summer. Yeah, late late August was mm. uh, when this was captured. Oh, there's the, the basket. Little, yep, and just a little bit short for Trenton, but he's got a chance to save his par. I'd have to assume that cart path is just casual there. It is in this case, yep. 
lay up. Don't want to risk the roll away from Andy there. Come on, Trenton. Oh. You see the think... breeze pick up just a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm pulling for Trenton. Are we allowed to do that as commentators? Can we? Yeah, I mean, okay. especially if you don't know them and you've never seen them. Yeah, play right. Before. It's all four. Yeah, I, I think I'm. I think I'm Team Trenton. <laughs> all right. Some birdies. <laughs> this is Trenton for what will be bogey. There you can see that drop off. Yeah, no wonder. You got the layup from Joseph. Smart. That looks absolutely, you know, and they say it's like hard to tell angles on camera and stuff, but even on the camera, that looks like a nightmare behind that basket. Yeah, I don't recall what's past there, but I, I wouldn't want to find out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> There's it probably be, some kind of monster. Yeah, sure. re repressed memories maybe from the last time that you played this course and had some trauma down there. <laughs> And what oh, a start! Yeah, that's a tap in. Turkey. He's got two tap ins and a and a twenty eight footer. And Joseph off to a scorching second round here. He's three for three. As they're going to move on to hole number four. Would you uh, would you prefer front of box or back of box, Terry? I mean, logic would say that you like to be in the front if well, assuming right. that it doesn't relate to your score. Sorry, just mm. like the just the playing of it. I I'm going to have to say the the front of box, so to speak, just because I'm a super fast player. Yeah. And so sitting around and waiting for other people to throw just kind of annoys me. Yep. yep. <laughs> so uh, let me throw. And then if I wander off or or start doing something else, you know, probably picking up a camera or doing something else to occupy my brain. How about yourself? Yeah, I think, I think we're similar in that. Uh, maybe for different, I need to throw so that I can get off to the left or right side of the fairway and start looking for my disc, <laughs> you know, so that by the time the other people get up to that point, we're all kind of walking into the hole together. <laughs> uh, you're such a conscientious player. <laughs> it's, and uh... It's really practical. <laughs> Now this is the first little bit of trouble we've seen Joseph getting into. Yeah, he really handles it. He's got to kind of just pitch out. I somebody I'm sure can correct me in the comments, but I feel like this is just this is a longer version of hole one, okay. in that you really have a gap to hit. It fades off to the left side, and this is you know about 100 feet uh, farther than what hole one is, and it plays as a par four. So finding some trouble here for Trenton as well. And you see, I mean, I think Smart. that tells us everything about the hole, right? That these guys yeah. have to just pitch out 50 feet. Yeah. It's cool to see that though, from Joseph, he's got three birdies in the can already. He might be thinking, man, I could just keep piling these on, but he's like, oh, I'm just going to play this one smart, not have a blow up hole. Let's see if he gets rewarded for that here. Yeah. And I, I do not have the caddy book in front of me. I just saw some, pink flags on the right side and i've got to assume those are actually out of bounds flags mm -hmm. so maybe that's why you're finding people a little bit tentative and pushing to the left side because they simply don't want to be to the right where it's ob yeah joseph certainly did that again short and left for the second uh second time in a row on this hole that's a good rip out of cyrus We'll see Andy put that sidearm to use again here. Okay, no. we're gonna... Stables up at the end. I was just going to say, as we're watching Trenton throw his, and, you know, it's it's just such a unique shape to the hole where it, you know, plays out straight, then kind of curves left, but then almost has a little bit of a right finish to it. Yep. Love that. I'm going to come see you, Terry. We're going to hang out. We'll play this course. Road trip. Yeah, there are so many incredible courses. We talk about disc golf meccas. We talk about places like, you know, Charlotte, of course. And then, 
you know, the Twin Cities in Minneapolis, St. Paul is certainly a place that if you're if you're looking for bang for your buck to go play disc golf for two or three days or a week long trip and you want to get in as many courses as possible, the, the Twin Cities is where you need to go. Oh, gosh. And all the rest of us are like, I we know we <laughs> get it. It's amazing. It, it really is. Uh, we are so blessed here in the Midwest. It's the home of world speed putting champions and <laughs> and believe it or not this is a more. fun fact for you um minnesota wisconsin and michigan are not all in fact the same state uh a lot of people <laughs> treat us like we are um <laughs> now i've been learning a lot about that because kansas city is split between kansas and missouri and i'm like i don't i don't really understand how that could or should work this video is not long enough for me to rant about how dumb that is. All right. So a great golf, great golf, but yes, that makes no sense. Now, Joseph so, picks up the bogey there. He's going to slide back a bit. Yeah. He still has the one stroke advantage over Andy, but after three birds, as you said, little hiccup, big shout out to all my Patreon subscribers and supporters. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Andy and Cyrus now being just one stroke behind can continue to put the pressure on. Very short hole, 170 feet playing right up to the platform. And you see the basket, it really blends in, mm -hmm. actually. Man, the roll away potential on this one is. I would be nauseous. I don't care if it's under 200 feet. I think the trick is that you're just not short, or if you are, you're coming in with just the right speed like that by Andy. Great shot. Andy seems to have uh, both directions in terms of a backhand and a sidearm. Oh, that's early. Uh-oh. Man, you roll away them. And then we got to wonder if the road is OB. I guess we'll find out. Uh, I, I do not believe they play this path, in this case, as out of bounds. I guess we'll, okay. we're, we'll see where he plays from to confirm just that. Um, natural punishment rolling all the way down the hill, I guess. So everybody else is going to have a relatively good look at birdie. We'll see if uh, Joseph can get up and down. You know, and you spoke of the roll away, and then it happened, so uh, he can blame you. But just thinking about even on the approach shot, you catch a root, you catch, mm -hmm. you know, one of those stairs or something like that, you've got a chance for even more danger or trouble. And Cyrus, easy birdie. Yeah, I don't start, I don't stop sweating about the dangers of this hole until I'm probably somewhere around hole seven or eight. I don't stop thinking about it. <laughs> Cool yeah, and he, he, even if you're trying to play too conservative, you get way up left of the basket. Then you've got that death putt coming back down. Yeah, definitely. I mean, sub 200 feet, sure. But yeah, not, not a gimme. Yeah, and sometimes we know that when a, a hole is so short and it almost feels like it should be a gimme, that puts additional pressure on you. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah, Andy... It's like when I arm wrestle one of my kids, you know? Yeah. You feel like, Oh my man, who's, who I has more to lose here? <laughs> yeah. It's, there's no, there's no winning that. So Andy is all knotted up with Joseph and Trenton's a little back at six. And then Cyrus right there also in that three way tie at 10 under. It's going to be short, but at least in the middle still. Yeah. And we hear him say safe, which again tells you that, there's some, you know, I guess we'll call it manufactured OB uh, that doesn't make just a, a 265 foot shot. Man, what a great flick. Yeah, and that's going to put him right there on the dance floor. Here's my guy. 
Yes. Oh, no. Come on. Trenton's really hoping that I would stop cheering for him <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I think I'm causing more harm than good. It's a big moment for Joseph. Yeah, he's really fallen off these last couple of holes, and now you uh, see him yanking. I think that he's to feeling the it. Yeah, I think he's definitely feeling a little bit of the pressure. He had a good, solid lead. Let it go a little bit. See if he can recover. Oh, my gosh. Nice one. I won't lie. I thought that base of that tree right there was the basket. Uh it wasn't. It was about yeah. 30 feet to the right of where I was looking. You know, object golf was pretty popular here about 40, <laughs> 40 years ago. <laughs> so even, is that, that's Cyrus's drive right there? Even? Yeah. Or yeah. Is that his hmm. Sorry. Well, now you got me confused. I was sitting I here looking his, for some st stats for the whole his drive. Yeah, I think it's his drive because the whole kind of turns where we just couldn't see it on the tee box. But even with that kind of short grounded shot, he was still right there. And there you see why he was saying, I mean, it looks like danger on the left and then a huge hill on the right. So this is a really pinched off green. Yeah, nice that's the birdie. Mm-hmm. And yes, that was just his second shot. So this will be Cyrus to tap in for his par. Yeah, not a bad play on that hole, honestly. After seeing the green, uh, to not try and absolutely pin it. You know, maybe throw something a little slower where you're going to guarantee that it's going straighter. And then maybe you're circle two, 30 feet short, something like that. Have a putt. Yeah, and I certainly was thinking that there was OB or something, and in fact, Cyrus was probably just, as you said, worried about possibly going deep and, and going over the ledge. So that was really the concern, as we see Andy go with the forehand. Mm -hmm. Another good one there. Got a tree, but Andy, could you hit me up after uh, you see this coverage and teach me how to throw a sidearm? <laughs> or teach me how to say forehand, maybe, I should say. <laughs> Cyrus in trouble. Yeah, 485 feet, the par four. And very even distribution on this hole. It plays as 4.24. And we see a good amount of birdies, but also a lot of over par strokes that mm. were dished out here on hole, four, on hole seven. A lot of trouble to get into then, I would expect. Easy if you keep it in the middle, but easy to get in trouble too. Nice. That's a good shot. Yeah, a little flip up there by Joseph. Finds the center of the fairway, clearly the most crucial part of this hole. And apologies if you already mentioned it, but yeah, Andy with that pinpoint forehand on the last hole takes the lead. Good flick there. Get back out of trouble. Yeah, and just to kind of time stamp it a little bit, you look at what it's like in Minnesota in August, how lush everything is, the, you know, the grass, uh, just all the trees. And then I think about, you know, how some people who play in, say, California or Arizona and what their fauna and the foliage and all that other stuff looks like throughout the year. It's just a totally different style of golf than some other parts of the country. And it, uh, I love it. <laughs> yep. It, it's almost a different course season to season with the way the the trees grow in you know the grass gets scrabbier in certain spots he doesn't love it but he gets a forward skip that's going to still give him a long look at the the uh, birdie opportunity on this par four routine approach for trenton Now, Cyrus, who got in trouble early, had to pitch out to here. So let's see if he can get up and down. This doesn't look like a gimme approach shot here. Oh, my God. oh no. He, he doesn't like it. He says, yeah. oh, my gosh, isn't it? Early. And 
outstretched Andy. You know, this is one of those, it, I, I'll say it's kind of tough to practice unless you go out and put yourself behind some trees and mm-hmm. truly just practice this Anheuser attempt. It draws a little bit of metal, mm. but doesn't quite get it to fall. Are we seeing Cyrus in there? Yeah, he is just a, a little bit short and right inside the circle. Ah, bummer. He still had that for par, though, even after all that. Be taking a bogey. Nice putt. Solid speed and authority on that, too. Right in the middle of the chains. Yeah, Joseph is going places. He's. It looks like he's got all the tools he needs. And just the young age of 14. Mm -hmm. He's been, he'll be uh, driving for quite a few years before he starts driving. (laughs) Exactly. And hole seven doing exactly what you hope a a well-planned and thought-out hole does, which is creates a little bit of scoring separation. As I said, played point too far over too far over par, mm. and uh, some birdies and uh, quite a few bogey strokes. We move on to eight at 270 feet. That looks like a 270-foot sidearm. It depends on where the basket is. I suppose it's over there. Yeah, solid shot. Andy, the sidearm expert of the card. Says he will follow suit. And uh, person I'm not rooting for anymore at all, (laughs) by the way. Hey, I think that may have helped. A little bit of height to it. Uh, I apologize. Did you say, have you ever played golf in Minnesota? No, no, Terry, you won't invite me. <laughs> well, We've talked about this. Sev- I would be there tonight, but you keep <laughs> telling me don't come. We're not hanging out. Well, someday we'll we'll get that Midwestern tour in of, of both Wisconsin and Minnesota. Maybe stop by for the, the preserve on the Disc Golf Pro Tour or the, oh, man. or the amateur championships next year. I know we're already trying to line that up. So that sounds yeah. like a dream. Cyrus showing, yeah, it looks like a really tough hole if you don't have a good sidearm. Trying to bend something around. It's so easy to pull that inside and early when you're trying to shape the backhand like that. Andy will be settling for a par. Here's a long look for Cyrus. I'm going to give this a bit. It doesn't look like there's too much danger behind it. He might kind of float it in a bit. Nope. Or just put it under. Not really, but that's okay. Thank you. Leaves him with a stress-free tap in. Come on, Trenton can finish with some fireworks here. It's going to well, save the, the fireworks. Yeah, that's the ground display of fireworks. That's, that's <laughs> the... <laughs> <laughs> kind of a sparkler. He's got the cannons ready for the back nine. I like it. Mm-hmm. Joseph regains sole possession of the lead 12 under and the rest of the card will just be looking to pick up their pars bag on no problem yeah that's my guy he's got the he's got the bag on putts he knows how it is The uh, is the third round the final round of this event, Terry? Yeah, they they move over. This is taking place on Saturday right now. They move over on Sunday and they play a 27 hole layout at the famed Kaposia Park. Wow, so uh, they're just all you know, truly moving day here. And speaking of putting a move on it, what a rip! It's just a yeah, great low line, doesn't do anything, nothing fancy but exactly where you want to be here on this par four 560 footer. Uh, Andy almost, I mean, that's still got plenty of distance, but he almost just had an absolutely picture perfect shot there. Uh, 
That's got some speed, too. Yeah, flips up, finds right back in the center of the fairway. That's a Nate Sexton hyzer. Good and safe, plenty of distance. Cyrus Lowe again. Yeah, and you see way up in the distance that there's a Mando that needs to keep you inside of it to the left. But I think almost any decent shot, you, you know, will take that Mando out of play in the first place. I feel like you really almost have to yank something to even bring that Mando into play. Solid approach here by Cyrus right Beautiful. up there on the dance floor. Well done. Stand still forehand. Check up. A uh, little little pass, maybe. Still great. Oh no. Just a bit light. No uh, commitment there from Trenton on that approach. Still got a long look, and that's actually an eagle bid. Mm. That would just be kind of rude frankly <laughs> you know at this point just kind of like take birdies and keep keep ahead but you don't need to eagle on them Trenton's not not having his best day he's gonna be left with a par look as the rest of the group gets in place and they're gonna continue to to putt out and close out and I want to thank you for joining I think Prodigy as our uh sad that slips out Prodigy is the presenting sponsor of the event Tom and Everyday Disc Golf. Thank you guys so much for having me in the channel. And Tyler, I hope you're going to join in the back nine. You got to see how this moving day shakes out. Yeah, I can't wait. Thanks for having me, Terry. We'll see you guys on the back nine. Yeah, appreciate it as we watch Cyrus tap in. That's going to be a birdie. And Joseph's eagle look turns into a very simple birdie. Again, I'm the Disc Golf Guy, Tyler Brickley. Thanks for joining. Thanks for supporting us via Patreon. And, of course, we'll see you guys for the back nine as we conclude the second day at the 2021 Minnesota Amateur Championships. We'll see you there. <laughs>